so in uh, today's class we are going to discuss uh, conservative coulomb's law and point charges so agar hum coulomb's law ko discuss kare but coulomb's law se pehle hum physics mein hamesha we will discuss a concept of point charges because we say the laws of physics they are generally applicable for point objects or point charges point charges uh, never implies that size of the body is small it's a relative concept point charge ka matlab sirf ye hai ki dimensions or size of the charged body is very small as compared to other distances in the problem so we say it's a relative concept point charges implies that size or dimensions of body are small as compared to other distances in the problem Now, when we say it's a relative concept, relative concept because a body which acts as a point body in one problem, it may not be a point body in another. So, it's not necessary that if there is a particular problem, it is a point body, then it will be a numerical point body. So, it's a relative concept. body which acts as point body in one problem may not be a point body in another or point hum isliye maan lete hain because we don't have to find the center of mass ki agar do bodies ke beech mein humne distance lena hai kabhi bhi तो उनके सेंटर ऑफ मास के बीच में डिस्टेंस लेना होता है बिकॉज सेंटर ऑफ मास निकालना हमेशा पॉसिबल नहीं है तो हम बॉडी को पॉइंट बॉडी मान लेते हैं कि ये दो पॉइंट्स हैं इनके बीच में डिस्टेंस है मे नॉट बी अ पॉइंट बॉडी इन अनदर प्रॉब्लम इन पॉइंट बॉडी नेवर इंप्लाइज दैट साइज ऑफ द बॉडी इज स्मॉल कि जैसे हम लें कि मेरे पास Say if you have two charges of the size of football, if they are placed on table, then we cannot assume that they are point charges because, as compared to their size, distance between them is not very large. But if the same two charges of the size of football are placed few kilometers apart, you can assume them they are point charges. So Coulomb's law जो था that's for force of interaction between point charges कि अगर हम Coulomb's law को लें we say this law is for finding the force of interaction between the point charges कि अगर मेरे पास कोई भी दो point charges हैं rest पे and they are separated by a certain distance r so if you have to find the force between these two charges you have to use coulomb's law so we say it's for force of interaction yeah the force of interaction between two point charges at rest is first part is it's directly proportional to product of charges directly proportional to
product of charges and inversely proportional to square of distance between them so we can say that f is mod sin dal rahe because we are writing the scalar form of coulomb's law so when you write the scalar form you don't need to put a vector sign because yahan vector sign dalte to mod hata sakte the but scalar form is force is always positive so you have put mod sin q1 q2 and it's proportional to 1 by r square so combining you can say Q1 Q2 by R square, or F is equals to K is constant of proportionality. K is constant of proportionality. and its value depends on two factors first factor is the system of units selected whether you are measuring in si or cgs so constant of proportionality depends on system of units selected and second factor is medium between the two charges whether there is air or some other medium so humne do case karne hai ki si mein force kya hogi aur cgs mein kya hogi so agar hum le pehle f ka to general formula ho gaya that f is equals to Now, because we said that K depends on system of units selected, two we can take two cases. One is SI, and other cases CGS. So, if we take the two other cases, CGS. Now, in SI, there are further two cases: vacuum between charges. A medium between the charges. Similarly, in CGS there are two cases. You have vacuum between the charges, or you have some medium between the charges. So, if you use SI and with vacuum between charges, K is given by one by four pi epsilon naught, and its value is nine into ten this to power nine. Newton meter square per coulomb square. This epsilon naught is called absolute permittivity of vacuum. This basically determines electrical properties. And this ki jo value hai that is eight point eight five four. So if you use this value, K force becomes if you have some medium, then it's K is one by four pi epsilon m. Epsilon m is permittivity of medium. And force becomes now. When we say that permittivity of medium, it is written in this form. 
in terms of relative permittivity. If you see carefully, this portion is force in vacuum. So we can say force in medium is force in vacuum upon epsilon r. Now, when we say that in medium, epsilon r is always greater than 1, it's called relative permittivity or dielectric constant. अगर epsilon r की value हमेशा वन से बड़ी है, तो force in medium always comes out to be less than force in vacuum. epsilon r is always greater than one. implies force in vacuum is more than force in medium. but this is the net force we are talking about. Coulomb's law is a two body interaction. Two body interaction means the force exerted by Q1 on Q2 is same. But when you place the medium between the two, the net force of interaction changes. Ki net force change kare ki force of interaction same in the air. Medium dalne se medium bhi kuch force exert kare Like agar hum Q1 pe force nikal rahe hain. If there is only vacuum between, so Q1 is experiencing force only due to Q2. If we have a medium bhi dal diya because of charges being induced in a medium, medium also some, exerts some force on Q1. The effect is that net force acting on Q1 will change. But you always have to remember that Coulombic force is a two-body interaction. The force between two charges does not change with change in medium. Net force changes. And net force is because of the force exerted by medium. So we say that it's a two-body interaction. Coulombic force is two-body interaction. force between two charges does not depend on other charges around them. Other charges ke kaadha net force vary karegi. Other important properties are it's a central force means attraction or repulsion that always acts along the line joining the two charges. There is it always acts along. Line joining the two charges. Electrical force is conservative in nature. Conservative in nature means the work done by electrical force does not depend on path followed. Columbic force is conservative force. Columbic force is conservative force. Which implies work done by the force does not depend on path followed. A work done in moving around a closed loop is always zero. So it's a columbic force. And it follows inverse square law, as in gravitational force.
means f is proportional to 1 by r square. Baki basic properties but that can be attractive or repulsive. अब हमने पहले लिखा था कि अगर हम एस आई यूज कर रहे हैं अगर हम सी जी एस यूज करेंगे तो इट्स मच सिंपल इन सी जी एस सिस्टम एंड इन वैक्यूम बिटवीन द प्लेट्स के इज वन सो फोर्स इन वैक्यूम इज सिंपली क्यू वन क्यू टू बाय स्क्वायर एंड इन सम मीडियम सो फोर्स इन मीडियम इज So we say adding the medium changes the force of interaction between the charges. Decreases net force. Like for water. Water we say epsilon r is 81. When we say epsilon r for water is 81, it implies that if two charges are placed in air, force between them is F. But if they are placed in uh, water, the force reduces 81 times. Now this is the basic concept of electrolysis, because if force decreases 81 times, it means that. कि अगर हमारे पास कोई आयोनिक लिक्विड है जैसे एन ए सी एल एन ए पॉजिटिव और सी एल निगेटिव में जो फोर्स है एयर में अगर एफ है तो वाटर में डिक्रीजेस एटी वन टाइम्स बिकॉज फोर्स एटी वन टाइम्स कम हो जाएगी तो चार्जेस को सेपरेट करना आसान हो जाएगा सो वी से चार्जेस कैन बी इजीली सेपरेटेड इन वाटर बिकॉज इन वाटर फोर्स रिड्यूज एटी वन टाइम्स सो दैट्स द बेसिक थ्योरी ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोलिस नेक्स्ट आता है कि अगर हमने कूलम्स लॉ को वेक्टर फॉर्म में करना है फॉर वेक्टर फॉर्म यू कैन हैव टू चार्जेस क्यू वन एंड क्यू टू Having position vector R1 and R2. This is R2 minus R1. This is R1 minus R2. Q1 minus Q2. अगर मेरे को फोर्स निकालनी है एंड आई ज्यूम द चार्जेस टू बी सिमिलर तो वी से फोर्स एक्टिंग ऑन Q1 वन इज रिपल्सिव इस पे भी द फोर्स फोर्स एक्ट इन दीज डायरेक्शन Let let us call this force as uh, F two one, F one two, F one two. हम ले रहे हैं जो Q two पे force exert की Q one ने. By Q1 on Q2. F21 is by Q2 on Q1. We know that direction of F21 and R12 is same. 
बिकॉज़ दोनों इस डायरेक्शन में पॉइंट कर रहे हैं सो फोर्स एक्सर्टेड बाय क्यू टू ऑन क्यू वन अब बिकॉज वेक्टर साइन लिख रहे हैं तो वी विल रिमूव द मॉड यूनिट वेक्टर आर वन टू इज यूज टू डिनोट द डायरेक्शन ऑफ फोर्स बिकॉज आर वन टू की और एफ टू वन की डायरेक्शन सेम है सो वी आर यूजिंग यूनिट वेक्टर आर वन टू दिग्निफाइज दट आर वन टू एंड एफ टू वन दे आर इन द सेम डायरेक्शन सिमिलरली यू कैन से बिकॉज आर वन टू इज वेक्टर आर वन टू डिवाइडेड बाई मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ आर वन टू सो कैन से एफ टू वन इज वन बाय फोर बाई एफ साइल एंड नॉट Similarly, you can write F two one F one two and R two one are in the same direction. And we know the relation between them. R one two or R two one का magnitude same है. but their directions are opposite so guys isko idhar substitute kar de f12 becomes minus of r21 ki jagah minus of r12 minus bahar le liya upon or you can say that f12 is Now this is nothing but Newton's third law of motion. Implies Coulomb's law is in accordance with Newton's third law. Coulomb's law is in accordance with Newton's third law of motion. Coulomb's law, come let it satisfies the superposition principle. Superposition principle, kya hota hai? We say ki agar mere ko kisi charge pe force nikalni hai, and there are number of charges around it, then we say that net force on that charge is vector sum of force due to individual charges. So vector sum of force due to individual charges means Net force on any charged particle so is pe base numericals karenge next class mein He will apply superposition principle to different situations.